Well, hello there. Here is my personal performance analysis. Um, this was a really awesome uh, final project to have. Kind of helped take me down memory lane and also helped motivate me um, to assess my goals for the upcoming um, year. So thank you, Dr. Lindsay, for this project. So moving right along, we're going to go ahead and go into my professional background. So I have worked at three different institutions and have had a wonderful experience at all three. I've been currently at the University of Alabama for the last five years, um, serving in the role of assistant director in the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. And just some of my highlight and accomplishments there have been, we had the highest grossing step show for the last two years in a row. Um, we did not have it in 2020 because of the pandemic, but 2021 and 2022, um, they've never had the amount of a um, attendees, nor have they ever raised um, that kind of money. So that's exciting for me. Um, also, recruitment and retention efforts um, have received recognition by our administration, as well as our staff, um, just because the organizations have seen an increase in their numbers. They've also been able to retain those members. Um, so I credit that to just our dedication um, to the health and well-being of our students, but then also um, to the programming that's being done by the chapters that I advise. Um, I was also able to relaunch a scholarship that helped benefit students in need. Um, so my students host a convocation, which is a kind of a kickoff event for incoming students um, to come learn more about the organizations within the Greek community. Um, and the funds from that go to the scholarship fund. So it was really nice to be a, a part of the relaunching um, of that to benefit those students in need. And just this past semester, we were able to um, help 12 students um, and give them a um, general scholarship. And I've also been able to advocate for students to have adequate space and access, you know, to more resources on campus. Um, so actually this um, next semester, my students are going to have a building that they can call their own. It's called Greek Assembly Hall. Um, and with that, they're gonna be able to um, host events, have their meetings, and this will be a space that they have full access to um, and also um, will be able to allow their alumni um, to have access to as well. So this is kind of a project that I feel like has been in the works since I started working in fraternity and sorority life a little over um, four years ago, but it's so nice to see that we're in the final stages um, of that building being completed. Um, so I'm super excited and pumped about that. Um, higher ed was not a field that I saw myself working in. And even when I started, I told myself I would give myself 10 years and then I wanted to do something else. Um, so I started out in admissions and thought I was going to stick around in admissions for quite some time. And I did for about four, um, four years, three and a half, four years. And um, then got over into fraternity and sorority life where I was managing their Greek house tours. So I was still doing some admissions work slash recruiting, um, but just for a different department. And then I took on an advising role which I have truly loved being a part of. And just, I've also highlighted some of my other accomplishments within those roles, but at Jacksonville State, I was the only recruiter to visit each school in my territory twice. Um, and before I stepped into that role as recruiter, they had had such turnover in that position specifically that covered the territory from Jacksonville State um, all the way down to the uh, Montgomery and the Dothan Enterprise area, um, there had not been a consistent means of a recruitment schedule in the past. So that was one of my um, short-term goals was to be able to connect with my students and provide them um, with the resources that Jacksonville State would provide them as far as scholarships, but also once they arrived on campus um, as a um, fully enrolled student. Um, then I got the opportunity to, of course, recruit for my alma mater, and I was the first Black regional recruiter based in Huntsville, Alabama. So grateful for the opportunity and as well as the experience that I had um, in serving as a regional recruiter. I loved my time working for UNA and I also loved um, being able to live um, in the city of Huntsville um, because it kept me close enough to home. Florence is home for me. Um, but we saw significant increase in enrollment um, numbers for the following counties, which I was serving as the recruiter for. Madison, Marshall, Blunt, Etowah, and Limestone County. 
So just to talk a little bit more about my vision and my, you know, mission. So work hard and dream big. It's just something that I feel like I constantly tell myself and use as motivation um, because I do believe that hard work always pays off. Um, So if you have a dream and you're invested um, in it, um, you need to just put in the work um, and you'll be able to see the fruits of your labor on the back end. But my um, mission is to inspire our others through service to live out their purpose in life on purpose. Um, I am someone who really um, prioritizes my mental health or I try to, um, and that has not always been something that I've been able to um, do successfully. Um, so for me, um, you know, living out your purpose and your truth um, in an authentic manner is something that I started having a blog for where I kind of document my life um, struggles, the highs, the lows, the good and the bad. Um, And I think I have now discovered I really want to pursue um, being an influencer um, and working with brands, but also using my platform and my voice to be able to advocate for those who may struggle um, with showing up as their authentic self, um, but also um, who are able to prioritize their mental health um, in all that they pursue. So that's the whole purpose of me tying in to live out your purpose on purpose, because it does take you being intentional um, in order for you to do that. So just talk about some of the professional goals um, that I have set for myself um, as an influencer. So my motto that I put here is to put forth my best effort um, to cross the finishing line, tackling one goal at a time. Um, So one thing that I know that would help me uh, move forward with that and becoming a part-time influencer, which I kind of do now, um, but I would like to take myself more serious um, as working as an influencer and working with brands, um, I need to audit my website traffic and um, study the social media platform analytics. So the beauty in that is that these platforms now make it so easy for you to be able to kind of track your success and your growth. And I just need to take the time to be committed to really writing down those numbers, studying the numbers and figuring out where my areas of weakness are so that I can make improvements um, in those areas. Another thing that would really help me would be able to um, basically not just to create a schedule to post at least three times a week, but to somehow go ahead and um, pre-schedule the posts that I plan to make for that week, possibly on the weekend where things aren't as busy for me because I do work two full-time jobs um, and I don't have a typical nine to five um, with my role at University of Alabama Alabama and working with students. So it's mo- most of the time meeting with them after hours and also reaching out to three brands a week about possible partnerships and collaborations. So the next thing I wanted to highlight here is to just talk about the industry overview um, with influencer marketing. So it is definitely, um, as you can see, the numbers um, are going up um, each year, and they're even included 2023 and 2024 on here. Um, TikTok right now is the driving influencer um, for um, influencer marketing right now, um, but Instagram is always going to have a consistent means. Um, I would say they're in the top, but TikTok is the driving force right now, and I personally love TikTok um, as well, and I do have a presence there, um, but statistics from 2019 24 and influencer marketing is basically traditionally used to generate awareness for a product and or a service then of course i wanted to highlight just my current experience knowledge or skills um, and just areas that i think i need of course more improvement on so um, i've been able to work with three brands this year with um and I um, actually have some paid partnerships there. So that's been really awesome for me. Um, and I also um, was able to get a thousand followers on TikTok. Um, so that's great. But um, areas that I struggle in with video editing, the confidence to just go forward, um, converting my blog traffic to increase visibility online are just things that I need to improve upon myself. 
And then I also, of course, included my action plan um, to kind of close out this year and going into 2023. So I need to increase my visibility online by 50%. I also need to repurpose content across social media platforms. And I need to market my brand consistently on TikTok um, to build brand loyalty with my target audience. Hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. I look forward to connecting with um, you even more um, soon. Thank you.